Amen. Did you come to give God some praise today? Just worship with us as we sing. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name.
Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial first day of summer. Today our flag flies at half-mast in honor of all of the men and women that have given their lives in defense of this country. We have many veterans that are a part of our church and we, on Veterans Day, we we make sure to honor them and thank them for their service and the sacrifice that they made. But there are some people that paid the ultimate price while all gave some, some gave all. And those people are not able to be in church services today they're not able to be with family and friends. They gave up their lives in defense of the United States of America. I am very moved in my spirit when I begin to consider the men and women that not only gave, but gave all. That made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom that I enjoy right now. And that we enjoy right now, right here, today. As a citizen of the United States of America. Young and old, and especially to our young people today. Men and women have died for you to be able to live how you live today. They sacrificed their dreams, laid down the precious moments that they could have with family and friends to protect our freedom of worship. Over 100,000 died in World War I. The average age of 28, more 19 year olds than any other age. Over 400,000 in World War II died, and there was the average of age of 26. 58,000 died in Vietnam, the average age of 23. I don't have time today to go through every conflict. I just grabbed a few to mention here this morning. But these men and women had such a tremendous sense of responsibility that I today can only honor with a heartfelt thank you. All I can say is I love and appreciate what they did and what they gave and what their families have given. And I can only pray that my courage will be as strong in my day of adversity. It's to those families today I want us to just take a moment, bow our heads, I want you to look at that flag that's flying. 
And maybe we can just stop the music for just a moment, pick it up. But I'd like for you just to take a brief moment as a moment of silence for all of those that, that gave their life for this great country. My heart is also greatly moved today by the sacrifice of God that was made for our salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let's pray together one more time before that we get back into worship. Let's pray for these families today. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for all of those, God, that sacrificed for the freedom of this country and this people, Lord. I'm thankful, God, today to be able to be able to gather underneath this flag, God. I believe you've blessed this nation. To me, God, we're still a nation, one nation under God. I pray, God, a special blessing upon each and every one of the families that have been affected by loss down through the years. And God, that you would draw them closer to you than what they've ever been before. And we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I think it would be good if we just make a little noise. Give God some worship today. Let's purpose that we're going to sing and praise and magnify Him with all of our hearts. Amen. Amen. Aren't you thankful that we serve the King of Kings today? He's worthy of all the praise and glory. Oh, yes. We have heard the thunder. We have seen the storm. The echoes of your kingdom coming. The rumors of our home. Where one day we will stand before you, Lord. Our all-together beautiful reward. And we will give you glory, bring you honor. King of all kings, yes, you deserve our everything. And we'll lift our voices with your praises. Jesus, you see in part right now we're warmed by the burning flames of the fire in our heart you promised you would lead us to lead us to your throne where we will worship you and you alone
you just lift your hands right where you are I feel the presence of God in this house today sweeping across this place we will give you glory all the praise shout it out say we will give you all my praise today all the glory you are worthy say I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Worship with us as we sing today. There's not a mountain too tall. There's not a problem so small that Jesus can't resolve. In time, he'll get involved. Cause our God, he cares about us. So wait. us through 
in time he'll make us new because our god he cares about us aren't you thankful for that today wait on the lord wait on the lord We walk by faith. 
faith and not by sight today. I wish you'd let your faith reach out to him right now. Right where you're sitting, right where you're standing. Let the presence of God sweep over your soul right now. God, we give you praise today. We bless your name today. for your goodness to us. There's nobody like Jesus. God, we bless your name. We give you glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to echo the words pastor of the church here today welcoming all of our guests to our parking lot service I also want to say that words cannot express the gratitude that I feel toward the brave men and women of the United States military who have sacrificed their lives so that we could live in the greatest country ever known to man. And I want to say we live in the land of the free because of the brave. And so with the solemn memory of the fallen at the forefront of our thoughts today, I say happy Memorial Day and may God bless the United States of America. Without any further ado, I want to turn your attention to 1 Samuel chapter 23. 1 Samuel 23, one verse, verse number 14. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds, remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. I want to preach to Calvary and those that have gathered here today for the next few moments on this subject, victorious in the wilderness, victorious in the wilderness. Where you're at, right there in your vehicle, would you bow your head and would you pray and ask God to help us here today and speak to us through the Word of God. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your presence and power. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are, who you are to us. God, we thank you for everything that you've done. God, we're indebted to you. I pray, Lord, you speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. For just a few moments here today, let me give you some context of the passage of scripture that we have read in 1 Samuel chapter 23. I want to start with 1 Samuel chapter 17, 
standing on the boundaries of the valley of Elah, we are introduced to the infamous story of the son of Jesse, the shepherd boy named David. The Philistines were on one hill. The Israelites on the opposing hill with the valley between them. A giant, nearly 10 feet tall, stepped out from the Philistine camp into the open. Goliath from Gath. He had a bronze helmet on his head and was dressed in what historians say could be up to 126 pounds of armor. Bronze shin guards. A bronze sword. His spear was like a fence rail with the spear tip alone weighing over 15 pounds. He comes out from the Philistine camp saying, Choose you a man for me or for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Each morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath took his stand and made his speech. One day his father Jesse told David, take this parched corn these ten loaves, and run to the camp of your brethren. Carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousands. Check in on your brethren to see whether they are getting along all right. And come back and let me know how they're doing. The Bible lets us to know that David rose up early in the morning, left his sheep with a keeper, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He arrives at the camp just as the army was moving into battle formation, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were moved into position, facing one another battle ready. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper. The Bible said he ran into the army came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, including David's three older brethren, when they saw the man, they fled from him, The Bible said they were sore afraid. David hears the words of Goliath and asks the question, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? With the anger of his brethren and his very own question, Is there not a cause ringing in his ear? David steps toward King Saul gives him the message that said, God delivered me from the lion and God delivered me from the bear. He will surely deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And armed with just five smooth stones, he approaches Goliath with the words, you come to me with a sword and with a spear. And with a shield. But I come to you. In the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies. Of Israel. Whom you have defied. Today the Lord. Will deliver you into my hand. And I will take off your head of you. And will give the carcasses of the host. Of the Philistines. To the fowls of the air. And to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth will know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly will know that the Lord saveth not with sword 
or with spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And running toward Goliath, David reaches into his pocket, grabs a stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine in the forehead, sinking it deep into his skull. The Philistine crashes face down into the dirt. And David runs to where the Philistine fell, stood over him. The Bible said he pulled the giant sword from the sheath and he finished the job by cutting off the head of Goliath. And when the Philistines saw that their great champion was dead, they scattered running for their lives. And the men of Israel and of Judah were up on their feet shouting. And they chased the Philistines all the way back to Gath. And God wrought a great victory that day for Israel at the hands of the shepherd boy, David. Coming back home from the battle, things begin to change for David. For as they got close, the women of all the cities of Israel met them. And they were saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And immediately Saul is angry with David. The Bible said that Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And that an evil spirit came upon Saul. I know I've given you a lot of context here today and have taken the last 10 minutes or so to give you background into a story that likely you've heard if you've attended Sunday school from the time that you were a child. But in an instant, David goes from the victor to the villain. He goes from a hero to being hunted. And the next four chapters of 1 Samuel, chapters 19 through 22, outline the cat and mouse game of Saul chasing David in order to kill him, to take his life from him. And this is the context with which we arrive at our text in 1 Samuel chapter 23. I want to go back to the very first verse of that chapter. Verse number one said that David is told that the Philistines are back. He has wrought a victory over the Philistines. In 1 Samuel chapter 17. But now in 1 Samuel chapter 23. David gets the report that the Philistines are back. Can I tell you today that regression. Has a way of driving you into a wilderness place. David is reminded in verse number 1 of 1 Samuel chapter 23. That something he thought he had conquered already had returned. And by the time we find him in 1 Samuel chapter 23 and verse number 14 that we have read here today. We find that he is living in the wilderness. I want to tell Calvary and all of those that are listening here today. That a surefire way to find yourself in a dry and wilderness place is after you think you have conquered a giant in your life only to have it rear its ugly head once again. I thought I had defeated it. I thought it was conquered. But now it's back again. And if you're not careful you'll find yourself discouraged because of the relapse. But the Bible said the just man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. I want to tell somebody here today, you've got to develop the ability to build your own self up 
and build up your most holy faith. You've got to develop the ability to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Sometimes the only one that can fix you is you. I want to say that to you again. Sometimes the only one that can fix you is you. The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. You've got to be able to grab yourself by the scruff of the neck and say I'm going to do something good with my life today. You've got to be able to whisper in your own ear that this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I've come to tell somebody here today, get you a Micah spirit that said rejoice not against me oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. So David, back to our text. David gets the report that the Philistines are back. Now I want you to look at the wording of 1 Samuel chapter 23 and verse number 1 if you have your Bibles. He said, the Philistines fight against Keilah. And then notice the writer goes on to say, and they rob the the threshing floors. They fight against Keilah, and they rob the threshing floors. Now, the significance of the threshing floor is this. It is a place of harvest. And it's a place of separation. Can I tell you, Calvary, anytime the enemy attacks, you can guarantee he's coming for two things. Harvest and separation. But I've come to tell somebody, as we have experienced here recently, he does not stop there. But when describing the victory of David at Keilah, verse 5 said that David fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle. That word in the original text signifies small cattle, such as sheep and goats. So besides robbing the threshing floor, the Philistines apparently had been trying to drive off the flock. Can I tell you, Your adversary, the devil, is after the harvest. He's after your separation. And ultimately, he's trying to scatter the flock. But I want you to look at what God tells David. And I feel a witness of the Spirit of God in this parking lot right now. Because God tells David when he inquired, saying, Shall I go and smite the Philistines? The Lord said unto David, go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. Can I tell you, God is not just interested in us smiting the adversary today, but he wants to save Keilah too. David, run the enemy off, but restore the threshing floor while you're at it. Can I tell us, Calvary, we cannot be content to run the devil off on a Sunday, only to forget the purpose of this battle by Monday. Amen. You've got to remember, this is about harvest, and this is about separation. I am convinced that our adversary, the devil, would be willing to take a beating at church on Sunday. So long as he knows you'll forget about the purpose of the battle by Monday. He'll let you get yours. Hear me today. He'll let you get away with worshiping God. He's got no problem with you feeling like you've got the victory. Just don't remember why we're here. 
But God told me to remind Calvary here today that like it was in 1 Samuel 23, the true battle is for separation and for the harvest. Let me preach to you and tell you, amen, we come to church not to just go through the motions, but we're in this because we're in a battle to reach our community and reach our world. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I've come to preach to somebody here today. Don't let us just be content to feel good on Sunday, but forget about why we're here on Monday. We've got to do and be about the kingdom of God and the Father's business. Be easy for us to drive in in our vehicles sing a few songs, feel a witness of the Spirit, feel like we've got the victory, and go home and all week we don't raise a finger to tell anybody about the goodness of our God. Come on, Calvary, I've come to preach to us today. If we're going to be victorious in the wilderness, we got to make up in our mind this battle is for real and the devil's playing for keeps and we've got to win at any cost. You've got to reach your neighborhood. You've got to reach your community. We've got to reach our world. There is a good God in heaven in spite of what you've been hearing on the newscast there is a good God that knows exactly what's going on none of this has caught him by surprise and regardless of what you hear on your radio or what you're reading in your newspaper there is good news and I've come to tell you what it is today it's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ the death, the burial and the resurrection of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've come to tell you, you can identify with him in baptism. Amen. You can identify with him in repentance. And you can identify with him by the infilling of the Spirit of God. There is good news in our world today. David I'm closing with this. David gives us the key to surviving in the wilderness. It's Psalm 63. If your Bible documents the Psalms as mine does, you will see that under the heading of Psalm 63 are the words... A psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. This psalm that David wrote was written as a response to the wilderness of 1 Samuel 23. And look what David writes in response to his wilderness place. Psalm 63 and verse number 1. Oh God, Thou art my God. Early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see Thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise thee thus will I bless thee while I live I will lift up my hands in thy name my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. 
My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Calvary, when you can worship in the wilderness, you will be victorious in the wilderness. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're going through. But I've come to preach to somebody and tell you, it is absolutely the will of God for you to live in victory through the death. We identify with the death of Jesus by repentance. We identify with the burial by baptism in the name of Jesus. And we identify with his resurrection when he fills us with his spirit. Right where you're at in your vehicle. I wonder if for just the next few moments, if you could just take a, a few moments in your car to identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you would allow him to come into your life and be the ruler over your kingdom. Would you allow God and give God permission to establish his throne in your life? Come on, all across this parking lot, I wish there'd be people, amen, that you'd start to lift your voice, lift your hands, and begin to magnify and worship the name that is above every name. As we daily meet the foe, out there on the battlefield, sometimes we have to stand all alone. It's when we reach for our holy armor, take time.